I'm here at the store today to pick up some parts for today's Tech Garage. You got the parts we called in for, Chris? Yes, sir, right here. Awesome, thank you. I got some steering components here because we're gonna take you through your complete steering system. We're also gonna look at your lighting system. The future's bright today on Tech Garage. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Today it's all about driving safe. We're talking about the steering system. Whether you have a rack and pinion or you have a parallelogram steering system with a gearbox, we got you covered. We're gonna look at both of those systems and we're also gonna give you some diagnostic and troubleshooting skills so you can keep your steering system in tip top shape. Later, we're also gonna take a look at the lighting system along with some wipers. But let's get started with steering. The steering's job is to change the rotary motion of the steering wheel into linear motion at the tires and the first system we can take a look at is a rack and pinion now rack and pinion you're probably thinking smaller cars from years ago not the case anymore rack and pinions are used across the board and there's a good likelihood you have one in your vehicle now it's called a rack and pinion because it has a pinion that goes down and it contacts this rack if I turn this you can see the pinion and the Healy cut gears are causing gear reduction pushing on the tie rod ends and moving the spindles to the left and to the right. Now an important piece while we're here is the spool valve. Now the spool valve, if you have a power rack, what's that gonna do? It's gonna direct the fluid. These little holes right here, take the fluid in and they direct it to one side or the rack of the other as you turn the wheel. And that's important because later when we diagnose it, if your car is pulling to the left or right, you may have some debris or fluid issues in these spool valves. Now you can see how it actually works. In the center of the rack, there's a seal. And in the center of the rack, I'll give you a good example. If I put a massive amount of fluid on this side and none over here, what's gonna happen is that fluid pressure is gonna push against this seal and it's gonna help the tires move to the left or to the right. If I put a massive amount on this side and none on that side, it's gonna push the rack in the other direction and give driver assist when you turn the wheel. But this is also an important piece of the puzzle because this seal right here that you can see in this cutaway, if that's leaking or bleeding by, there's gonna be a lot of stiffness, it may be hard to turn either way and also this end seal this end seal keeps the fluid in on both sides so when we check those bellow boots over on the car if we notice any fluid or if you notice any fluid on your vehicle these end seals are leaking it's probably time to replace that rack but what we can do is some diagnostics right on the vehicle so let's head over to the Mustang and go for it now the first thing I want to look at is the tie rod end. The tie rod end comes out here and it connects right to the spindle assembly. And it's pretty simple to diagnose. Just grab it, pull it, wiggle it. If there's any slop or it's moving back and forth, that'll cause looseness in the steering. And here's a good tip for you. If you ever change your tie rod end, go ahead and count the threads and put it back to the same spot because we're going to talk about alignment angles later and that affects toe. You know, that'll at least get you to the alignment shop. If you come over here and we keep going, you can see the bellow boots. We talked about that a little bit earlier. If these bellow boots have fluid inside of it, that's because the end seal on the rack here is leaking. Also, there's a transfer tube that goes from one side to the other. When you turn to the left or right, that lets the bellow boots expand and contract. So what happens is the fluid may transfer from one side to the other, so make sure it's the seal that's leaking that you believe that's leaking. Also, you can see, check your lines, check your hoses, check your fittings, make sure there's no leakage, and then look at your mounting hardware. That's important because there's three scenarios I'd like to give you. That could happen to your rack and pinion or your steering system. The first one, well that would just be stiff steering. Now these are all affected by alignment angles, but if you had stiff steering, we gotta look at the pump and the pump pressure, and we'll do that later. These rack and pinions and gearbox need good pump pressure in order to turn to the left or right. Another one is the car may constantly wanna turn to the right or turn to the left. Remember that spool valve earlier? Well, if that spool valve is clogged, or one of those orifices are not allowing the fluid to get to one side and we continuously have pressure on the other, it's gonna push it to the left or right. And the last one is wander. Your car may wander all over the road. Well, those mounting bushings and hardware, if the rack's loose, the car is gonna to wanna to wander to the left or to the right. 
Now we need to take the Mustang out of here and bring in an older pickup truck that has a parallelogram steering system with a gearbox so we can understand everything about that. And we'll do that right after we come back with more Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. This edition of Tech Garage is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. GRI Engineering and Development, manufacturers of CarQuest Wherever Platinum Professional Brake Pads. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to Tech Garage. We have our older pickup truck in here that has a parallelogram system with a gearbox. But before we get up under there, I have one laid out right on the bench for you all together so we can look at all the components. It all starts right here with the gearbox. Now these are durable systems. It starts right here at the worm shaft and the worm shaft connects to your steering wheel. And when you turn it, you're turning the worm shaft and it's transmitting through a series of balls and rollers and it's coming out at a 90 degree angle down here to your sector shaft. Your sector shaft then connects to this is called a pitman arm. The pitman arm connects to a relay rod, sometimes called a center link or a drag link. And then on your relay rod, it's supported on the other side of the vehicle by this idler arm. The idler arm holds up the whole other side of the system. Then you have your inner tie rod in, adjusting sleeves and outer tie rod ends. So let's take a look at it, a pickup and I'll give you some scenarios that may help you with your parallelogram steering system. It all starts right here. Once again, my tie rod, just like the rack and pinion, except the tie rod on this one has an adjusting sleeve. You can see the boots actually missing. What's going to happen there is the dirt's going to get inside that tie rod end and it's not going to last very long. So you want to replace it. And just like before, go ahead and count the threads so you can get the alignment close. At least that'll get you to the alignment shop. Then we come over here. You can see the inner tie rod end. It's connected to the actual center link. My idle arm. You want to grab and pull that. Make sure everything's secure to the vehicle. Your bolts are tight. Come over to the other side here. This is my pitman arm. My pitman arm's connected to the gearbox here. Now, once again, just grab that, pull it, tug it. Suspension systems and steering systems all have components that wear out. So just by pulling it, moving it, you'll see any looseness. Make sure your gearbox is secured to the frame. Make sure that there's not any movement in that. That will cause wandering in the steering. If it's flopping all over the road and you're trying to keep it straight, make sure that's good and secure. Then it comes over to the other side to the tie rod end. Now, a couple tips, if you have to remove the pitman arm from your gearbox, you might have to get a puller like this. It just goes up on here and it pulls the arm off. Index it and mark it so your steering wheel will be straight when you put the other one back. Also, with the rack and pinion system and a gearbox, there's a test that you can do right out in the driveway. You can put the vehicle on the ground. It's called a dry park test. Turn the wheel from the left or to the right, and while somebody's doing that, look up under there. It's going to buckle. You're going to see something moving. It takes a lot of stress to move those wheels. If something's buckling, is probably worn out and it's time to replace it. But you know, either of these systems aren't going to work too well without power steering pump pressure, so we'll look at the pump next. You know this pump can develop 1,500 pounds per square inch of pressure and only use three horsepower to do it. Now the pump's belt driven, could be V-belt or serpentine belt. This one happens to be a serpentine belt. The engine crankshaft's gonna pull this and it's gonna drive this power steering pump. The shaft comes right into it. And here at Tech Garage, we took one apart so we can look inside because this is really cool. If you look inside a pump here, what you have, this is called a vein type pump. And what happens is centrifugal force as the belt's pulling it around, the shaft, you can see, it's going to go ahead and fling those little veins out. And when it flings those little veins out, what happens on one side of the pump, it's going to create a vacuum. Well, that's your return line. Your return line is going to send the fluid back to the pump. And then as it spins around, it's going to pressurize it. The veins come out. The chamber gets smaller. When the chamber gets smaller, it pressurizes the fluid. Then what happens? It's going to come out your high pressure line. It's going to go to your rack and pinion or your gearbox, either way. Now, on these pumps here, there's also a pressure relief valve. I can pull that out to show you. And let me give you an example. Uh, you're going down the road, maybe 3,000 RPM, 2,000 RPM, but you're going straight ahead. So you don't need much pressure to turn to the left or right, so this valve is going to bypass it. Now, if you're turning into a parking lot and you're only going at 1,000 RPM, 
it's gonna need a lot more pressure, this valve's gonna control that. And we'll diagnose that a little bit later on the vehicle. Now, another important piece of the puzzle is the fluid. The power steering fluid, that's the lifeblood of the system. It cleans, lubricates, and seals. You remember when we used to put transmission fluid in it? Well, you don't wanna do that anymore because these pumps have evolved and they become pretty technologically sophisticated and so has the fluid. Make sure you follow your manufacturer specification for the fluid for the vehicle you're working on. Now we need to head over to the truck and do some diagnostics on the pump so we can tell if it's working good or not working at all and we'll do that right after break when we come back with more Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. What test can you perform to check your steering system? A, lift test, B, dry park test, C, reverse drive test, or D, bounce test? The correct answer is B. A dry park test is an easy way to check for any loose steering components. Turn the steering wheel back and forth with the vehicle on the ground and look for any play or movement in the steering linkage. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Welcome back to Tech Garage. Now during the break, we ran our pressure test on our pickup truck and everything's fine. And you know, you can go ahead and do this yourself. You can go down and get a pressure gauge, get a high pressure gauge that goes to the power steering pump in series. And we ran three tests. Now the first test we ran, all we did was just kind of backhead the pressure, made sure that the pump was developing pressure. The second test, we turn it from stop to stop. You can go out and turn your car from stop to stop. What should happen is the pump should develop maximum pressure and then come back. So that pressure relief valve is working properly. And the last test, just simply nail it to 3,000 RPM, make sure that pump's putting out and then falls back down because the wheels are straight ahead. If you find that you have a pump problem, you might have to change it out. And I got a few tips for you. The first one is if you're pulling the pump off, you're going to have to pull the pulley on a lot of vehicles. In order to do that, you may need a kit. I have a pump puller kit right here. And what I do is simply just put this on the puller right here. And then you'll have this puller that goes on there and you'll tighten that up because these are press fit. Now, to put it back on, just as important, you're gonna have to get a press here in order to push it all the way back on. Another tip for you, make sure it's lined up properly. These serpentine belts have to ride in line and they have to ride right or you're gonna have problems. So if you push it too far or not enough, your belt's not gonna track properly. Now that you know all these systems and you know them well, remember, if the gearbox fails or the rack and pinion fails, there may be some metal or debris, so it's so important that you flush the system and use fresh fluid. Manufacturer recommends about 50,000 miles. You wanna go ahead and flush it, put some new fresh fluid in there. You can do it two ways. You can pull the return line off, run the vehicle, pump it in a bucket, I've done that before, or you can get a professional machine like this that will actually flush it from the whole entire system and make sure that fluid's good and fresh. Well, it's time to go to Brian for the email question of the week. John, I've got an email question here from Sammy in Fort Worth, Texas. He said that his car steering pulls really bad to the right. He recently replaced the tires and it stopped for a little while, but the problem's back. Now, this is right in line with what you're talking about today. Any advice for Sammy? Brian, it looks like Sammy has an alignment issue. But before we discuss Sammy's issue specifically, we need to understand some basics when it comes to alignment. And you can do this right at home. There's three angles, caster, camber, and toe. And I like to think of it this way. If this is my wheel and my spindle, if I take caster and I move it forward, the wheel spindle is gonna go in this direction and the wheel's moving to the rear of the vehicle. That's negative caster. If I take it this way and I move it this way, the spindle's going down that, that's positive caster. Now, caster's not a tire wearing angle, but it could pull. The car's always gonna pull to the most negative caster. And it helps in returnability of the steering wheel. Good example is you're going down with your bicycle, you're riding, you let go of the wheel. If you got extended forks like this chopper here, it's gonna keep going straight ahead. The more positive caster, the harder the car is to steer. Now, you get negative caster, think about that shopping buggy. When it goes and those wheels start to wiggle in like that, if you have negative caster on your car, you may get some wander in the steering. The next angle we can look at is camber. And once again, if we put our wheels up, we camber in this way, this is negative camber. And then we camber out. So I take my wheels here, 
and I camera them this way, that's negative, and this one's positive. And you can see, I'm exaggerating it, but if I camber it in, I'm gonna wear the inside of the tire. If I camber it out, I'm gonna wear the outside edge of the tire. Now, Sammy's car, maybe, positive camber because it's gonna pull to the most positive. And what you get is a tire wear pattern that looks like this. It's totally wore out on one side and the rest of the tire's good. Now the last angle we need to look at, and that's called tow. Well, you can do this right in the driveway. Cars are towed in or towed out. And what happens if the front wheels are towed in really bad? It's gonna feather from the inside of the tires out. This would be a good example of tow in. You can see how the road's pushing through here and that's gonna feather the tires. Toe out, on the other hand, it's gonna feather from the inside of the tire out. That's the most tire wearing angle and you wanna make sure your toe's in good shape. And you can take a tape measure and go from the front of the tires to the back of the tires right on your vehicle and get your toe pretty close. Now, we should be safe with suspension and steering. Everything's in good shape with our parallelogram system and our rack and pinion. We're driving safe, so we need to shift gears and turn our attention to the lights and wipers, and we'll do that as soon as we return with more Tech Garage. If you have a question for Tech Garage, email it to techgarage at advanced-auto.com and be sure to watch to see if your question makes it on the show. This edition of Tech Garage is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. GRI Engineering and Development, manufacturers of CarQuest Wherever Platinum Professional Brake Pads. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by Low Car, quality, plain and simple. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Well, we're driving safe when it comes to the steering system. It's time to turn our attention to the lighting. And you know, I have a whole lighting system right here on a board to take a look at. We're all pretty comfortable when it comes to vehicle lighting. You know, we turn it on, we got the headlights, the tail lights, the turn signals, the normal vehicle lighting system. Turn on a turn signal, and what you have is you have a flasher here. And what a flasher does, it actually opens and closes the circuit and it causes the light to turn on and off. A little tip for you, the light may be flashing fast or it may be flashing slow. That's because a bulb's out probably and what it's doing is it's creating some resistance and changing that value and it's flashing a little bit quicker. Now newer cars may use a body control module, but guess what? You turn on your signal, it goes to the body control module and he blinks it. So it's the same concept. You can check it with a voltmeter and you'll know what's going on. Types of headlights, well, there's the regular sealed beam headlight. You've seen these before. Just stick them in the front of the car, they're sealed, a little plug on the back. That's pretty much old school. The newer ones are composite headlamps. Now this is a composite headlamp here, and what makes it a composite headlamp is, if I flip it over like this, I can actually pull the bulb out. And the bulb's separate than the whole assembly itself. And this is actually a halogen headlamp. Tip for you, you don't wanna go touch it on this because the oil from your fingers will shorten its lifespan. Then we get to the LEDs, light emitting diodes. And this is actually off our M45 right here, and I can light it up for you. You can see the LED bulbs throughout here. Now, some LEDs might take a little less electricity, but there's probably still 12 volts going into the back of it that's gonna go ahead and light it, and it'll step down the voltage inside of there. And some of the newer cool technologies out there is HID, high intensity discharge. And I have a bulb right here, and this is really neat because this bulb takes 600 volts. There's an arc that goes through here and what happens when you turn on your headlights that arc creates a big spark through there and then it lights that xenon gas inside and what it does it gives you that bright white light okay now the last thing I want to look at is an HID schematic because I said it took 600 volts but if you look here really old or new it doesn't make any difference I'm coming down here with 12 volts and then I have ground on the other side well, internally, it's gonna to arc to that 600 volts just for a split second to go ahead and light that bulb, and then it's actually gonna draw less electricity. Speaking of M45, we have one here with articulating headlights and a little cloudy lens that we need to show you. 
Now our M45 not only has HID headlamps, it also has articulating headlamps. And that's really cool, because what happens, and you can see it here, as you turn the wheel to the right, or you turn the wheel to the left, the headlights are gonna follow you. It uses a steering angle sensor, talks to the body control module, and it lets the headlights know, hey, I wanna turn to the right. So they follow you, you got the right lit up. You turn to the left, the same concept. Really cool. But on our M45, we also had here, it was real cloudy. Audi, and these articulate headlights can be very costly. So what we did, we went down and got a restoration kit, and it's really simple to use. I come over here, and I got the 1,000 grit sandpaper. And the 1,000 grit sandpaper, I put on my little adapter here, I sprayed some water on the headlamp, and then I sanded it away. Once I got done with that, I switched over to the 3,000 grit sandpaper. Now the 3,000 grit was a lot finer, so I could get that nice polish, and it started to come about real well. Then what I did, is I took the Plastic X here. This is a cleaner and a polisher. What I did is I put about a nickel size on this pad right here, this cleaning pad that comes in the kit, come down. and I buffed away. And you can see this side here where I had the tape, still cloudy, not putting out much light. This one over here, almost like brand new. So this is a good way you can save some money and restore the headlights. Now we're good with headlights. All we have left is wipers. One more system to look at, and that's the wiper system. And I wanna break it down for you to three different components. Right here, I got the wiper motor. Now the wiper motor turns on when you turn your wipers. But what a lot of people don't know is up under that cowling, you have what's called a wiper transmission. That's the linkage that transmits the motion from the wiper motor all the way out to your wiper arms. Your wiper arms are located right here, and then your wiper blades are attached to the wiper arm. And if I turn it on, you can actually see the wiper motor is driving the transmission, and the transmission up under the cowling of your car is connected to your wiper arms. Now also, there's also the washer reservoir. That's right up here. You know when you push that button and you pump the fluid and it washes your white windshield? Well, that's what that does. There's electric motor right here. And here's a good tip for you. You can go under there and just feel that electric motor, have somebody go inside the car and push it. If you feel it running, you got two parts of that system. You got the vacuum hoses and the water lines that run up, and you have the motor. So you'll have to determine between the two. You also have Rain-X. That fills in any of the imperfections in the window. And the wiper blades, you can put them on, but just follow the instructions when you do that. Now, we talked about steering systems, lighting systems, and wiper systems. Now get out there and maintain these systems, and you'll be driving safe. So till next time, from our garage to your garage, thanks for watching Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts.